In the videos before, we saw some methods of displaying data in R, and in this last episode of this part of the series, I want to show you two things. One is um, how you can build up a plot from scratch using a uh, plot that represents the cumulative sum um, of the number of deceased, and so kind of a dying profile from a um, burial ground probably. And the other thing is um, a tree plot, which is one of the few possibilities to present more than two d dimensions in a two-dimensional plot, actually, in, in a metric way. And yeah, let's just start with the cumulative sum plot. So as I said, this kind of uh, display or this kind of uh, calculation is always used when it comes to um, presenting processes that build, that are iterative and built uh, on top of each other. For example, um, the number of deceased according to their age classes. So if you want to have an idea how many people have died on a burial ground before age of, uh, before adult age, um, you have to sum up all the individuals that are younger than adult age. And with that you get a um, graph that is constantly rising or at least not falling in the end which represents yeah the the added um, number and let's just construct a burial ground with number of deceased that should be a vector containing let's say 10 16 10 32, 34, and 4. This gives you this nice vector, and I name the vector by using infants 1, infants 2, juvenile, adult, mature and senile. Okay, and now we have the number of um, individuals in infants 1 on this burial ground, infants 2, and so on. Um, we can already directly plot that, as we have done already several times. And you can see here now the individual dots. You can turn that into a line plot, type equals to L, and now we can see how many of the deceased have died at a certain age, um, but usually we want to have, um, so this line only makes sense if we look at a continuous process, and that would be if we look at the dying profile, so how many people have died at a certain age and below so that these individual positions here have kind of a relationship to each other. And we already probably remember that we built the cumulative sum of something already before. The command for that is cum sum. And when I do this, I get the cumulative sum here. You can see down here, so infants 1 stays the same. Infants 2 is now infants 1 plus infants 2. Juvenile is infants 1 plus infants 2 plus juvenile itself and so on. So at the end we have 106 individuals that have died in senile age or younger, meaning the total data set. And we can also encapsulate that in plot command. And now we have here our kind of plot of our um, desired um, yeah, content. So this is a plot that's not directly scripted now, how we come from this kind of numbers to this kind of display. It's still not, um, so the basic data representation is there, but it's still not very nice, and we will improve that 
very specifically by also designing our t-axis here um, on our own. To do so, um, at first I want to turn these absolute numbers into percentages, which kind of makes more sense, by dividing the cumulative sum of the number of deceased by the actual total sum of that. And by that you can see now this y-axis has changed from starting from 0 to 1. So this is just the percentage of individuals that have died at a certain age or younger. Um, then, as I said, we want to specify the axis ourselves. So I give axis equals to false, which produces now just a line and not the axis any longer. And this string here is uh, annoying. So we want to get rid of that and also the index here is, um, doesn't help us so much, so we move that. So xlab should be, let's say, h class and ylab should be cumulative proportion. Oh, much nicer. Now we have the line and our labels. And yeah, for a good and nice plot, you always need, of course, the axis. And we have, we add them um, individually. We can start with the y axis. This is already in a state that we can use as it is. And the, um, the general philosophy in R is horizontal rows comes first vertical columns come second. It's also true in naming the plot axis here. So this is the horizontal axis, the x-axis, that is axis 1, while the y-axis is axis 2. And I want to plot the y-axis, so I say give me axis 2, and then we have here our y-axis already there. Um, the x-axis now is a bit more complicated. Um, we want to display the um, yeah, the development of the uh, um, dying profile and so we also want to add um, the first case when no one has actually died so that we get actually also here the, the zero point and to do so I add up here in the plot part the zero to our consum. If I do that see now we have the zero displayed here and also a data point that represents zero and now we have to name the uh, classes here and that I will do an axis one if I just do it like that I get again one two three the index number but this doesn't help us so much so we will change this labeling and we label at certain positions, so at 1 to 7, which is at equals to 1 to the length of the number of diseased, plus 1 representing also our 0 here. So we have 7 positions, length of the number of diseased 6, plus 1 is 7, and with that, if I just run all these bits again, nothing changes still, but we now specified where to put the labels. And the actual labels we give here, and that should be uh, labels should equal to the names of our vector here. But if I do that, we can see that it's an error because we have only six names, so we have to add another name for this um, first class here, which represents our zero. Let's say I just make that empty. And I have to replot the whole thing. So and now we can see here nothing infants one, infants two, juvenile, adult, mature, and senile. If we also want to add the box 
uh, that usually comes with an R plot. I can just give the command box and then we have encapsulated the whole thing in this frame. And also we might like to give a title and that is cumulative proportion of deceased by H. Very well, now we have here constructed our own plot um, from the data by manually specifying the plot itself and the axis and adding all these bells and whistles to the plot in a manual way. And with that you can design all the plots that you probably need with this uh, base set by directly interacting with the plot environment to build up very sophisticated plots. And one of the sophisticated plots that's already there is the tree plot that we will now uh, treat. And the tree plot is used to display the values of three variables at once. And one of the most common use cases for that in archaeology is presenting um, the number of different um, domestic animals, for example, that were found on settlements. That's at least where I saw tree plots most often, but you can easily transfer this concept to other situations. But let's start with that. So I name a variable um, animals and I let I simulate now kind of the number of animals here. And I do that by using the function rnorm, which gives me random numbers coming from the normal distribution. So all these distribution commands come in different flavors um, or with different um, um, links to that. Um, you can have for the normal distribution the density function, the probability function, the quantiles, but also an R norm function that gives you random numbers from something. This is true for a lot of other um, distributions. So that's the, the inbuilt number generator in R. And I want to have 30 numbers um, that are normal distributed. And I could give here a mean and a standard deviation directly. If I don't do that, I have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Um, but let's, you can also do that later on by, for example, multiplying 100. And if I run that, if I just run that part, here I get random numbers from centered around zero. If I multiply that by 100, I get a bit higher numbers um, up to, um, yeah, the standard deviation is now 100. What standard deviation is, you probably will learn in a later video. Um, and I just want positive numbers. So let's say um, I want them to be absolute. And I also want to round that, so we get uh, round numbers. We have it. And let's make that 50 actually. Okay, that looks, that looks okay. And I want to distribute these random numbers to three columns. In a matrix, so I wrap that around matrix and say my column number should be three. And now we have here a vector for different animal numbers, and I make the call names of my animal vector to represent cattle. Sheep goat and pig. So that, oops, sorry. That might be different sites, and these are the different numbers of animal bones found there, or minimum number of individuals, or something like that. Okay, um, to make the tree plot, 
we need uh, another library because it's not embedded in the base library in R. So we lo load the library AD4. And if it's not there already, just a small reminder, you can always install libraries by clicking here on the package uh, button and press install and name the library AD4. But you can also always use the command line by packet install packages and give the name of the package, but be aware that you have to put them in quotation marks. Otherwise, it's interpreted as a variable and not as the name of the package you want to install. And in Windows computers, this there are pre-compiled packages so that should the installation should be faster on Mac and uh, Linux computers, the packages are compiled into um, machine readable language, so that might take a bit longer. But if it's done, you can load the package and use its its functions. And um, yeah, the name of the command for making tree plot is triangle plot from 84. And I, if I just enter my animal variable here, you can see that here um, we can see um, the data points from our animals, some axis that we can't interpret right now, and another triangle up here. This triangle up here represents the um, proportion of the whole space from 0 to 1 that we see. So you can see that here is 0 and 1, here is 0 0.8 and 0, and here's also 0 0.8, meaning that we see 80% of the whole range from 0 to 1. Um, we can just get rid of this small triangle here, but we can also leave it. If you want to get rid of, you can specify show equals to false, and then this thing is gone, but we currently leave it like it is. Uh, so you can see, so our axes are currently not labeled and the reason for that is that we're using a matrix here so animal is a matrix and for that this automated labeling doesn't take place there are several ways to change that um, probably the easiest way is to turn our matrix into a data frame and to do so i just say animal should be a data frame and there are lots of transfer functions in r they always start with S. So S, data, frame, and my animals vector there. And it's very easy to, so in case of transforming a matrix into a data frame, that's usually no problem. Um, and essentially the result looks the same, or except for that we now have explicit number of uh, or identifiers of the individual cases. Um, the other way around is probably sometimes a bit more difficult. For example, a matrix, or reason is a matrix can only contain values of the same kind. So if you would have a data frame that mixes numbers with strings, for example, you would get some strange results there. But in general, this transfer from one type of variable to another, if the conditions are fulfilled, is quite easily. And most of the time you have a command that starts with S. So if we repeat our tree plot here now, you can see now we have cattle, sheep, goat, and pig. And the numbers here represents the percentages of the individual cases in regard to sheep, goat. So um, in this data point here, in that side, we have, um, let's say, 20% sheep, goat present, very low number of pigs, also around about 20%, and the same a high number of cattle when we look to this axis here and with these here they have rather a high number of sheep goats and a low number of pigs and a lower number of cattle so each of these um, sides of the triangle represents one of the axes and that's why we can represent three dimensions here in a two-dimensional plot so to 
make that a bit nicer, um, or to have an idea what the actual data points mean, we can label them. For example, label should come from the row names of our animal data set. And this doesn't change the actual uh, display to have the labels also represented. We have to put the label triangle parameter to true and also add C lab equals to one. And now we can see instead of the points, the individual numbers here. And if the row names were a bit more speaking, you would see them here, for example, the name of the different um, sites, if you would have put the name here. So this is one of the higher level, more sophisticated plots. If you want to have an idea what you can do with um, R in respect to plotting, I can just suggest two uh, pages for you. The one is the R graph gallery, which you find here under www r minus graph minus gallery and you can see here lots of examples how to do several plots so let's see if there's also a tree plot available oh not really so let's go to simple scatter plot versions and now you can see here very many scatter plots and you can also see here is a ggplot2 part and here is an r base part. We have worked until now only with these uh, base plots um, and you have a lot of options already there. If you want to have an idea how the people created these examples you can always click on one of the plots and see here the R code that produces produce this kind of plot. And so with that you have an idea how to recreate uh, this kind of plot yourself if you like the way it's displayed. And the other things up here, so this is the ggplot library and I haven't used that in the course because ggplot comes with a very specific own um, syntax that is different from R and not to confuse you, I stick to the standard plots, but ggplot is actually most of the time the way to go if you want to display data in a nice and um, uh, publishable way and if you want to have an idea what you can do with ggplot and how this is done. On the one hand, you can look here in the R graph library, or you go directly to ggplot2.tidyverse.org, which is the web page where ggplot is explained. And also here, you can see very many examples, especially if you go to, where is it actually? Here, learning data visualization, um, here's an online course available and uh, a cookbook um, and also some documentations in general. So with that you have a lot of tool sets to display your data in a nice and meaningful way. And we leave now the visual part. In the next video I will talk a bit more about numbers, just numbers in respect to descriptive statistics.